This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Pete. And uh, you guys missed some great conversation we had before we started this, but uh, today is what, Will? Today is a Wild Card Wednesday, and it's uh, continuing the series of Conversations with the Krillcast. Oh, I want to stop you there, Will. Did you realize that the Conversation with is already like Philip DeFranco's bonus podcast channel? I had no idea. I don't watch him. <laughs> well, basically, we're going to get called out when we get like a thousand subs. He's be like, these guys stole my idea. <laughs> well, you know. Nope. We can <laughs> just play this watching. clip right here. I don't watch him. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he's watching you if he complains. Yeah, exactly. That is true. That means that we have a really massive come. channel. Actually, that's right. We, we did uh, copy it. I don't know who he covered. is, but I'm assuming he's popular. He's he's a news channel, mostly U.S. based, but also some world yeah politics and all that good stuff. I haven't stuff, watched you know. him since like 2018. I don't oh, know. News? I kind of forgot yeah. he existed. He's, a, he's one of the biggest independent news creators. There's a couple other big ones, but he's oh, really? one of the biggest. Yeah. yeah. He reacts a lot to celebrity stuff, and yeah. that's what turned me off. I was like, I don't care oh. about celebrities. Yeah, me neither. Most no. people, I feel like most people truly don't, but they like the drama, so they watch anyways. I don't know. I, like, I literally couldn't care less about those people. Anyways, but this has nothing to do with what we're talking no. about today. I just <laughs> wanted to point that out to you since you're actually here yeah. tonight, and I can call you out yeah. on it. Okay. So... <laughs> Pete, before we get started, tell everybody about your channel. Oh, my channel is uh, Open Every Box, or OEV Pete, um, channel dedicated to modern and retro video games, and when they come together for fun, because you, a lot of times out there, it's either you're a modern channel or you're a retro channel. Why not both? I love both. I love the last 50 years of gaming, so that's what I do. That's what I talk about. That's what I enjoy doing. Hold up. Yeah. What is this Rest in Peace Amico uh Oh, because the the controllers is all beaten apart. There. Oh, okay. I remember watching this. I was like, wait, what? Did you not see the thumbnail there, Chris? I <laughs> see it now. I see it now. Okay. But I was like, man, a, what? It's got a double meaning, right? Double meaning. It's a little bit clickbaity, and mm -hmm. it's no one can call me clickbaity because I can say, well, dude, the controller's destroyed. It's obviously dead. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Ah, using the brain fair, there, man. There, yeah. The I love the background story time he gave us on that, but uh, that's in a different episode. So, Pete, today this is all about you and well, your channel. Sweet. <laughs> so you nice. get as much time as you want to advocate for yourself and your channel, and also tell everybody about yourself. So, yes. Will, why don't you tell? Uh, why don't, not tell? Don't tell him this. Ask him this. What's the first question? All right. Uh, so, what inspired you to create your YouTube channel? Oh boy. Um, I don't know if I have one singular inspiration. I think it was um, I. I've been raising, trying to raise money for Extra Life for a little while, and I've been doing, uh, I used to stream on Twitch when I do Extra Life, and I'm like, why don't I just start creating content um, about stuff I love, which is games and Funko Pops and just silly stuff like that, um, and help try to raise awareness for Extra Life that way. Um, so I created a channel, and I'm like, this is fun. I, I had a lot of fun talking to uh, to people who are watching the videos, and really the inspiration is to raise awareness and money for sick children everywhere. And I don't do YouTube for a career, so I've got that flexibility to uh, have fun with the platform, take risks, not worry about things, and whatever um, whatever awareness I can bring to Extra Life, it's more than that I that I could do without doing YouTube, I guess is probably a bad way to say it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's all about sick kids. And there's a back, big backstory. I've talked about it on my channel quite a bit about that. Um, but uh, we can get into that later when I think one of the questions is around that. So absolutely. But, and uh, mostly share. If anybody's wondering, I will have a link in the description and I'll try to remember to pin a comment with a link to his extra life uh, fundraiser on, on, I have a link on our, just our outline here and I will make sure I copy that to the video description and in the pinned comment below for anybody that wants to donate to Extra Life. Um, I do really respect that cause a lot. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's kids, right? Because kids a lot of times can't help themselves, so I'm going to do my part and try to help them. Absolutely. So how would you describe your relationship with YouTube and social media? <laughs> oh, I actually love it, actually, because I choose how I, I interact on it. I don't let other people dictate what I'm like on YouTube or who I am. I've had people say, why are you always so positive? Why can't you be negative? I'm like, but I choose to be positive. <laughs> I don't want to be negative. Mm -hmm. So YouTube is um, is kind of it's kind of cool. I don't understand YouTube. I, <laughs> I don't think anybody really understands YouTube. If you guys do, please let me know. Nope. Um, I just do my thing, and if people watch the content, great. But the community, like I met you guys through this, right? 
Yeah. I, I, I got the chance to, to meet you guys and talk with you, uh, start building a relationship. And so my relationship with YouTube is, is that I'm meeting new friends, new people, expanding my circle. I use Twitter. I I've, I've love Twitter um, because I got a problem. I, I, I can't sit down and listen to somebody for more than a few minutes talk about a problem or, or watch a TV show or news. I like getting my information in bite-sized content, like you know, 200 characters or less, because I have two young kids under eight. I have a full-time job. I love video games. I do a lot of other stuff on the side, so I like Twitter. I just don't like the ugly side of Twitter. Oh, yeah, um, no. Where, where people use it, so I avoid that. If somebody's on my timelines that is harassing people or saying something I don't like, I get rid of them. I just... Yeah. There's no no thinking on my part. Same as in YouTube. Um, so for me, I have a great relationship with it because I, I curate it. And um, a lot of people criticize me for that, but uh, okay. It's <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, um, And uh, yeah, no, I, I've met people, and that's the most important thing. I've met cool and interesting people like yourselves. I've got to know your show. I've watched your show regularly. I've met so many content creators that are like-minded who are just positive, energetic people and don't have agendas, and that's through social media, so Wait, I can't that, say I hate it. That doesn't describe us at all. <laughs> we definitely <laughs> have an agenda. We're definitely not positive. Yeah. What? I don't, what? No, I don't, but you guys aren't, you guys aren't uh, you're not hurtful, and that's a difference, right? Yeah. You can be critical, because I like a lot of channels that are critical, um, but if you do it in a way that's respectful, that's fine. Um, and I think we're the ugly side of social media. I just avoid. I just don't have time for yeah, it. I I just waste it. I, like I don't want them living rent free in my mind. Mm-hmm. Oh you know no, I mean? no, no! Several of the people I'm following right now are starting to get very political. I'm like, oh, if I follow yeah. you for games. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, the like election. Well, it does it to everybody. Started, I've yeah. stopped watching YouTube channels because of people's. Um, they decided to turn it into personal attacks against other people or stuff oh. like that. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, creator on creator stuff. I, I most of the time I tune out unless I'm like really like concerned about the creator they're calling out. Then I'm like, what what's going on? Like, is this person gonna be okay? <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? So I only found out about this thing called TikTok um, <laughs> probably about a month ago when it was in the news that it was getting banned. I'm like, well, why why is something getting banned that I know nothing about and talking about social media? So I put it on my phone. And then I realized within 10 minutes of doing this, that why did I even get into this? Like, so I deleted it right away. Like, it was just, it was like, just a useless waste of my time. But it was just a funny story of like, that's social media. I thought TikTok was supposed to be this, this big ecosystem. And I'm like, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I got rid of it. And because mm-hmm. it started turning into like, you know. A just endless Twitter. scrolling, yeah. <laughs> a video Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that is a good. That's a good description of it. Because like, yeah, that's just... how lame I am, everybody. So if you like lame content, come and open it. <laughs> come to <laughs> open it because uh, I just found it about Twitter, uh, about Twitter, about uh, about TikTok. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've known about TikTok for a while, but uh, I've never ever ever logged Nothing in either. or created you an account. So what, what came unless before you, TikTok? Unless you like dancing, there's a whole lot of dancing on that, but everybody's doing the same move with less yeah. clothes on, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like whatever. Well, there there was there was Vine at one point in time. Wasn't there was something that TikTok it was, it was bought, mu- though, musically? Wasn't it? it was musically. Musically, that's it was like music.ly or something. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. you young kids, you guys know all the cool stuff. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, kind of young, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> um, okay. So what what inspired you to talk about the Amico and the Evercade? That was my oh, question, wow. Chris. But oh, man, I'm sorry. Why are you stepping all over Will like that? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm going to have to step in, man. I'm going to have to protect you. Well, fine. Ask the question. Ask, ask the question, question, Will. Ask yeah. the question. Refuse to ask, uh, answer it for him. Okay. Uh, what inspired you to start covering the in- uh, in television Amico and the Evercade? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, that's a great question because there are two <laughs> big parts of my channel. Thank you, Will. You're, you're such a good Thank interviewer, you. man. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Um, why did, okay, let's start with the Amico. So um, I don't recall ever seeing the 2018 trailer for it. I guess I just missed it. Um and so I was just, I, I call something, you'll think this is weird, I, I was farting around YouTube. So basically <laughs> that's an expression we use in Canada on the East Coast when you're just mess, messing around something, you 
your parents would say, why are you farting about something? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I was farting I about... I use that now. That and dicking around. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, that's the exact same thing. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, they called it farting around when I was a kid. <laughs> and I was just looking for some content creators that I thought were interesting and had something to say. So I stumbled on a page uh, called The Atari Creep. And it's a guy from Boston. And uh, anyway, he does a lot of retro content, which I absolutely love. And I know nothing about original Atari stories. Um, so I was reading, watching some of his videos, and he, he mentioned something called the Amico by Intellivision. And as a young kid, I knew about Intellivision, didn't own one. Long story short, I went, uh, that was the tipping off point. And then in December, I shot a video of 2019, a massive Amico video about reacting to what I knew about it. And I had, like, instantly fell in love with it. Like, I thought, okay, this is great. This is what I want. I want to play Pitfall, but with better graphics and... But the same core game. That's mm -hmm. what they were pitching. And I, um... I shot the video, and it sounded like... I was... It sounded like... It just didn't... It wasn't me. It felt like I was hyping it without understanding it fully. So I didn't put up the video. Um, and I deleted the video and then I did a lot of research on it because I do that. I research everything. So I went in and I found out that Tommy Tellerico was involved with it. And Tommy Tellerico, I only knew of him. I didn't even know this Earthworm Jim stuff. I knew of him because he was on a TV show in Canada called Electric Playground. And it was my favorite show to watch in college when I didn't go to class. <laughs> and I watch him and Victor Lucas. So I said, oh, I like this dude. Like he was comic relief. He was sometimes the bad guy on there. And, uh, so I said, okay, this guy's cool. I, I know, I know of him. And then I researched a product and I just started like looking at some of the games and their mission statement, their family values. Uh, and I'm like, I'm going to start videos on it. So out of the blue, I said, I need a title for this. And I said, well, it's coming out in October. So let's do a countdown and see if, you know, let's do a countdown every week. No one's doing it. No one's talking about this. I started talking about it, and the more I learned, the more I understood about it, I just absolutely loved it. And then Tommy reached out to me. I think I had 150 subs, and he just said, hey, you want to talk to me? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I talked to him, and and uh, I've been covering Amico ever since, and I love it. And uh, there's nothing that uh, is uh, dissuaded me from it. Now, the Evercade was something I had uh, heard about in April of this year and missed the pre-orders on it. And so I was disappointed mm -hmm. and I forgot about it. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know any, like I forgot that it was even coming out. And then about a month before it came out, I managed to get a pre-order through a local Canadian video game store. And um, they took a pre-order and said we got one f canceled. And so I pre-ordered it and then I checked into it and I'm like, wow, this is, I'm a handheld gamer. I'm a huge handheld gamer. And uh, I don't like illegal ROMs. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. just a goody two shoe. I just don't like taking I like owning the stuff I'm gonna play and legally buy Same. it. Same. So the Evercade, I PSP is my favorite one of my favorite handled systems of all time. I like the ergonomics of it, love the story about it. I love that they were uh, a small company and everything I heard about them in social media was great. And then when I got the product it just went it went through the moon. Like I'm, I'm absolutely like it's on my desk all the time. Like it's right here. Like it's, it, I'm playing it constantly because I get to play games I never got to play when I was a young kid on it, mm -hmm. and it's become a big part of my channel. I'm thinking it's up there now with uh, Amico and uh, Modern Gaming, like it's the triple threat on the channel. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of too like the Amico has been more of a a lot of research on my part to figure what it out what it was, and the Evercade was I wanted it, forgot about it, and then ended up loving it when I got it. So speaking of Does portables, that make sense? yeah, it totally makes sense. But okay. speaking of portables, are you gonna get an analog pocket? Yeah, I got one pre-ordered and I got crapped on all over the place from some uh, some retro people that I pre-ordered that. Really? Yeah. That's bizarre. I'm like, I love video games. I've been loving video games for almost fifty years. I buy every console. <laughs> I love it. I save money to buy consoles. Of course, I'm getting the analog. I'm a handheld gamer. That's where my love is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I got crap down for that. It's like, oh, it's way too expensive. Oh, okay. Why are you buying that? I'm like, um, okay. Um, cool. Are That's you my wife? wife? <laughs> <laughs> but Do yeah, you... no, I, I did. Yeah. I think a lot of people um, jump to conclusions on 
analogs products being expensive when they don't understand what an FPGA actually is and what it takes to make one. Yeah, it's an engineering marvel in my it's opinion. It's insane. Well, anything. Yeah. But I think they were mad because the way that analog handled the um, the pre-orders of oh, it. And yeah. They didn't have enough units and stealth dropped it or whatever. And, and, it's, and it is fairly expensive. I'm not going to say it's not. But what's the point of working hard if you can't spend a little bit of money and have some fun? That's the way I mm-hmm. look at it. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. But, you know, Chris is going to make fun of you for that because he has uh, spent a pretty penny on some of his games. <laughs> <laughs> I have. That's um, true. One of these days, off camera, I'll show you my office, and uh, you can see what's in here. That's not because I got most of my collection packed in boxes, but I have about twenty five hundred games surrounding me right now. Mm. It's a uh, I love video games, dude. I just I, there's something about it. There's I, a story to everyone. I might be wrong, and I might be speaking for Will on this one, but I think Will's favorite series on your channel is the uh, the Road to A fifty four on the Xbox. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, thank you first of all, because uh, you're you're the one dude watching it. <laughs> no, I. Uh, that's a. That's uh, you know when you have these personal projects on your uh, what in life, that you know won't be successful, but you just do it anyway. Like won't be commercially successful or viable, oh, okay. or nobody like it, but you love it. That's my. That's my series for me. Yes. And um, like because that Xbox is uh is. The X, why the Xbox is so important to me, it's one of the first consoles I was able to buy with my first um, job uh, of uh, coming out of university the second time, because I went to university twice, and I kind of didn't have a job, and then I got a job, and my first paycheck, I went and bought this monster Xbox. <laughs> and I was in love with the system ever since. Like, I just, yeah, so that's my personal series. That's my pet, my pet project. I respect it. I respect it. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was ever going to do... It's going to be expensive, though. Oh, It's going to yeah. be expensive, dude. I'm only 378 games in. i only got another 500 to go. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to yeah. be costly. No, if I was going to collect for a console, that would be the one. Yeah, I think I've got the most expensive game out of the way. Um, I don't know want to spoil it for anyone, but I did pick up um, Outrun 2. Ooh. Okay. Nice. That's that's I, I do have that one. I paid a lot for that one too. I bet you did, yeah. The only the only um... really, really quiet. I don't think my wife's gonna watch this. this <laughs> yeah. The, Maybe uh... she could be big fans of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> The, the biggest uh, the biggest thing I ever did that I was actually a mistake that turned out to be really cool is I accidentally bought a GameCube component cable. Oh no! Accidentally. Oh no! That, it, oh wait. The GameCube one's the expensive one, or is it the Wii it's one? It's like two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my cousin picked one up at um, I don't know if you guys have Value Villages in the U.S., but we have a it's a thrift store up here called Value Village, and my cousin, who's a big game collector, like heavy hitter, I call him, went and picked one up for four dollars. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and then he flaunts it. He sends me a picture. Like, what I got? Four dollars. <laughs> well, eBay, like, eBay had so here's what I'll tell this story finally because I've never told it before on this channel. I don't think eBay had sent me a coupon that said, oh, you can get this much percentage off tech. And I was working night shift at the time. So I was only mm-hmm. had like half awake half the time. Um, so I saw this coupon. I was like, oh, man, like 50% off of a technology item if I use it before like December 31st that year or something like that. I was like, dang, that's awesome. Well, I didn't read the fine print. It was like specific sellers. And so I went to go buy it and click the apply mm-hmm. coupon code. And it didn't work. Well, it was one of those ones where it wasn't like a uh, buy it now. It's like a live auction. So once you hit buy it now, it pulls it off. Oh. And so like then yeah. you have to pay for it or else your eBay account's in jeopardy. And I was like, I yeah. built this eBay account for like the last decade. What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> You've so got rep. <laughs> so I was like, Ugh. So I, I actually just went through with it. And I was like, oh, I'll, just, I'll just return it. Well, then I noticed no returns. I got it. I started using it. I loved the picture quality. And I was like, mm, yeah. maybe this one oh, will just geez. be one of those. So yeah. I did just keep it, and it ended up being really awesome. <laughs> yeah, but um, I would never buy it twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those things, right? Because uh, it came out, but at the time, nobody was buying Nintendo cared about the visual mm. fidelity of the graphics. They were just, you know, they were just caring about the quality of the games, right? They, I can remember when that came out. I, um, a lot. Nobody, nobody was talking about getting component cables for their systems mm. back then. It was, you know. So that's why they didn't make a lot of them. They didn't sell. Um, but anyway, it's cool that you have one. 
doesn't matter. As long as you're happy with it, who cares what you paid for it? Long as long as nobody starved in the uh, purchase, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, no <laughs> absolutely not. It was all good. <laughs> That's my bar. The kids yep. starve or not get yep. to go to school. Or have to <laughs> he, he had to get one of, rid of one of his kids, but just the one. He had like just, 12 others. It's fine. I didn't have any kids yet when that happened. Just... <laughs> well, you had the one, Chris. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> oh, jeez, well. Oh, okay. So... I think I I might know the answer to this, but you might surprise me. What is your favorite console slash handheld of all time? One of each. Favorite console, favorite handheld. Well, my favorite console is Xbox. Original Xbox is by far my favorite console. Now, the one I have the most, like, yeah, it is the Xbox because that's the one I like. I truly do love, and um, and I think my favorite, my my definitely my favorite handheld of all time is the PSP. Like I love the PSP, um, and not because I had it when I was a kid, because a lot of the, both those consoles I was an adult when I got uh, was the PSP was my video game when I traveled well a long while ago in the 2000s I traveled over the U.S. for work for, gosh, seven years, so my PSP went everywhere we went, and every city I go to I'd find a video game store and I'd go look for new PSP games, and uh, so yeah the PSP has got a special place in my heart for that and the Xbox like I already told you it was. Uh, one of the first consoles I bought with a paycheck, and it was uh, one of the first. Actually, it's the first one I ever bought that I didn't have to ask my brother or my mom for money to help me buy it. <laughs> Fair enough. Because consoles in Canada is really expensive. That Xbox at that time was like eight hundred bucks. Oh man! That's... Oh wow! Yeah, wow. it was super expensive. Well, I just bought the PS Five, nine hundred dollars. That is nuts! I can't believe. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. how much more expensive Tax consoles in were in Canada. Game with that, with it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> It's the exchange rate, right? So, then you get the taxes, two taxes. Then you get like a technology tax. What's the main game store in uh, Canada? Is it GameStop? Uh, EB Games. Oh, which EB is, Games. Uh, okay. Same company. A wholly owned, separate entity, but under the umbrella of Games GameStop, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because EB Games used to exist in the U.S. until GameStop yep. and then merged, and they they basically combined all business in the U.S. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, in Canada and Australia, there and I think England maybe there's still EB Games. Yeah, the, a lot of the UK has EB Games. Talking to like Wise Fish and Hidden Xperia and those guys. Yeah, it's it's a lot of the. Yeah, yeah we still like in our city here, in Vancouver, we got probably about four or five EB Games in a city of three million. So, okay. hmm. yeah, but we got like probably ten retro game stores that sell everything like modern and retro. So. I like that they both exist personally. I hope that the big corp and the locally owned stores always exist personally. Oh, 100%. Like, 100%. I'm all about physical and handheld stuff. I, I like digital too. Like, I buy digital games. Uh, but there's something, like, I look forward to going to uh, a local video game store here in town yep. that I go to a lot to talk to the owners mm-hmm. and just chill and chat games and meet people and just it, it's really fun it's hard now with the covid stuff going on because you're all masked up it looks like you're walking in to <laughs> rip off the joint most days but uh, <laughs> somehow let's say us gamers sometimes man we look like we could be packing <laughs> yeah. but uh, but no I, I really i really enjoy uh, uh both of those and we um we don't have a lot in our area but we we have quite a few gotta drive like i there's none that i can walk to everything i gotta drive 10 15 minutes to get to Fair enough. I think Will's got that next question. You can let him ask it? Yeah, Yeah, exactly, Chris. (laughs) So nice of you. All right, so uh, what weekly topic or segment is your favorite to do and why? Oh, boy. I got so many babies. I had to kill one of my favorite ones. That sounds harsh, (laughs) actually. The retro Uh, one. Chris can relate. Old old trailers from... I, I did used to I started one up where I used to look at old movie trailer, TV trailers, but I got so many copyright strikes I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so I guess my favorite one series to do outside of the Xbox one, because that one, it's not fair for me to say that because that is that, that I just love that. Who doesn't love opening boxes with games in it? Mm -hmm. Um, I think probably one that I feel the most connected to is collect or not. And first time with they're kind of related collect or not is playing games that I don't own on uh, mini systems. Like, I love that. Uh, and then kind of working my way through whether I'm going to go out and buy that game physically, because I am a physical game collector. That's what I do. I love that. So, collect or not, I'll grab a Sega Genesis Mini or a SNES Mini or 
Neo G uh, not Neo Geo Mini, though I do have one right there. Um, and um, or Turbo Graphics, which is an amazing system. And I'll just see if I want to collect it or not. So I love that series. And then first time with is usually the rever uh, the flip of that when I do collect something for the first time, the first time I'm playing it. And then you could see sometimes on my face whether I think I made a good choice or not based on how good <laughs> yeah. that game is. Um, so those those are two of my favorite, and they've been probably the longest running series on the channel. Um, and of course, I you know um, the Amico Countdown to Intelligent Amico. That's more of an informational thing. I do that to just keep the community informed and the uh, the Evercade extras. But yes, collect or not, and first time with my two favorite series. You okay there, Will? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Lift in the Matrix. <laughs> what, do, what do you guys? What do, what do you guys think? What, which ones do you guys watch? That's a great question. I'm gonna I interview you guys now. I definitely watch your Miko segments. I watch your. I, I do watch your Xbox Collect segment. Yeah, that was. I want to say that's my favorite because I love Xbox. <laughs> I probably hit half of your Evercade segments. It depends on which days they come out on. Um, your podcasts, whenever they're on, and I actually have time to watch, I do. You gotta but, come on there, but at you guys. Well, come on I've been telling you this for the longest time. The time that you guys record it is like prep for bed for my kids like i can't it's okay. very difficult for me to hop on for that well, segment. I'll, i could make an exception one day to get start to show early i've done that before and i'm willing to do that again uh it's like i'm not on no set schedule i do it the reason i moved to sunday nights and i think i told you this uh chris that was uh because of working kids i mm -hmm. i'm in charge of bathing and uh and putting the kids bed every night myself and it just i couldn't do it on the weekdays i was finishing work too late and then i'm like oh, i can't do a podcast so well, we'll get you on there. We'll make it work. I'll make it work for me. You let me know the day you can come on and the time, and I'll spin up a, a make all access for you guys. Okay. That, that, that'd I be promise fun. you. Mm -hmm. See, I've said it now. It'll leave this in. It'll, <laughs> don't edit this, but no, seriously, I will. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, yeah, because you guys were more than flexible with me for this time. Like, I mean, come on. Well, for the long, for a very, very long time, during a specific uh, working situation I had going on, I was working six days a week, Monday to Saturday. It's like Sundays became our, our normal podcast, and we do it like late mm -hmm. at night. Because mm -hmm. I was working night shift, and Will didn't have a uh, Monday morning um, requirement oh. every morning. So it worked out great, because he could sleep in, and I was just up all night anyways. So, mm -hmm. But that, that work shift has ended. Now I'm back to a more normal schedule. So Yeah, man, Will now has a Monday job. <laughs> yes, he does. So Saturdays pesky actually jobs. work better for us yeah. anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, those pesky jobs. Eh? <laughs> yeah. like, oh, yeah. So you want, you want a job so bad during the interview process, then you land, and you're like, oh, what did yes, I do? Oh, <laughs> now i got to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> Crap. Oh, man, what? Will's Dang like, it. I was hoping the podcast would get me so I don't have to get a new job. <laughs> what the heck, Chris? I used to tell, tell my wife before we got married and we were dating. And she used to say, so, like, because I was in between switching careers and said, she goes, what do you want to do? Like, how do you want to be set up for the rest of your life? I used to look at her all the time. I just want to be a kept man <laughs> so I can play video games all day long. There you go. For people. That's all I want to do. I just want to because I'd already worked 15 years prior to that before meeting her, right? So I had like had this whole different career. You're like, I'm and retiring. I'm, like, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I just want to be a cup man. Is that there doable? <laughs> uh -oh. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see here. So how do you choose the topics for your podcast? I remember you have like a running list. Um, I think yes. the PM and the PM, I've tuned into that quite a bit. Yeah, so PM and the PM, um, I, so I'm taking zero credit here because I don't deserve any. From PM and the PM, most of that comes from Mike, Mike Garvey. He sets the topic list. I set up everything, get video captures and all that. Im and I are so alike but so different. We love video games. Like, he knows so much about certain video games. I know a lot about other things. So he sets the topics. I'll um, massage the list, add some stuff in or remove some stuff uh, for that one. And I love doing PM and PM. It's it's we got to get you guys on there too, uh, if you can, because that's more of a modern. That's my, that's the podcast where I get to talk about a lot of modern stuff going on, gaming, movies, and stuff. Uh, for the Make All Access, I usually set a topic, a surprise topic for everyone, and then I have a Discord, uh, which a bunch of the panelists come and drop topics in, and then we all, I just say, hey, you guys want to talk about this this week. But I'll always surprise them with usually a subtopic. And then for Evercade, the Evercast show, um, it's basically me and Rich are reviewing each collection, and then we do a new segment, and Rich is working on something else for that too, but it's kind of collaborative on that one. 
I don't know how yeah. you manage a Miko All Access. There's so many people, so many talking heads in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I heard cats all day. I've been doing the same type of project manager job for 30, 30 years now. So, um, yeah, it's. But you know what, though? You let them talk. Because a lot of times people will talk themselves out and they'll finish their segment and be done. Uh, I'll interrupt when I want to change the tone or I feel people might be kind of getting a little too um, excited about <laughs> something. I'll switch the tone, not because um, the, the community and the viewers are a big part of all my podcasts. You guys know if you've ever, you've been in the chat before, I tend to interact with the chat a lot. And I, I don't want the show ever to be any of the shows, myself and the panel or other people just talking at the chat. So you'll notice I'll interrupt the discussions on Amico All Access, especially with chat from uh, chatter from the chat, and that's my way of letting people know. Let's give other people a chance to talk. Let's hear from the chat, stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. There's there's quite a few people that we've had on that they uh, they like to talk a lot, and uh, I think I'm probably part of yeah. the problem. I talk a lot too. Yeah. Well, well, I, I was do like, too. Let me get a word we're in we're edgewise. <laughs> we're on YouTube, so we all like to talk and like mm -hmm. to probably hear our voice. That's that's okay. Yeah. Chris right. doesn't like hearing my voice, so that's why he cuts me off. He asks my questions. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the first time it's ever happened. One of the first and one of the earlier podcasts we did, I had made a, I was complaining about the same thing. Like you never let me talk, Chris. And then the next podcast, he just edited me out. Where like <laughs> you see my mouth moving, and I'm saying, <laughs> I did do that on purpose. That was pretty funny. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> that was real funny. <laughs> it was the best podcast, though, you know. Oh, okay. It is Will's turn to ask a question, though. I think you answered that one pretty well. So I, I was curious how you manage all that, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so next question. Uh, what is the coolest thing that happened to you on YouTube? Oh, boy. Other um, than meeting us, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the Krillcast. Um, yeah. I, I guess probably, I think, uh, that's a couple, I guess. Probably getting the first comment was the coolest thing somebody actually took the time to comment <laughs> mm -hmm. on one of my videos that wasn't telling me that, that i should quit youtube um that was a pretty cool thing i think um i i think when my first video actually did more than a few views that was exciting i mean having tommy reach out, tommy tell rico reach out to me and say hey you want to chat that was pretty cool um I don't know. I think it was basically just getting um, building a community. I mean, that was the biggest thing, like meeting new people. Like I met tons of new people on this uh, on this platform. But that was a cool thing to happen. I still remember that, like the first time I had somebody comment more than once on a video or a couple of videos in a row. That was pretty cool. I mean, oh, I got a fan. That's awesome. And it I, wasn't a relative. I have to say <laughs> that is like the coolest thing when somebody takes the time to say more than just that was a cool video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you get that first long some... form comment and you're like, whoa. Yeah. And it's like, wow, this person got a lot to say. And then I start responding to them and then they're surprised that I'm talking back to them. Like, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. But yeah, but I don't know. I think, I think anything, anytime somebody takes a time out of their day to write a, any type of comment that seems genuine about what you've just created, regardless of a video, a book, um, a song, whatever, that's cool. That's awesome. Like that means mm -hmm. someone actually cares, right? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, yeah. The coolest thing for me probably is when we start getting comments from the same person over multiple weeks. It's like, wow, yeah. we actually have an audience. Yeah. <laughs> a consistent one instead of like one yeah, that's always exactly. changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you you'll have people come and go though. You'll have people that like um, that'll check your video for a few months, your channel out for a few months at a time, leave for six months, then come back. Um, and you'll start seeing that pattern, right? Because people, the algorithm and YouTube switches all over the place. But when you start seeing like you have a constant group of people that are constantly checking out your stuff and contributing, it's pretty cool. It's pretty special. I have a little comment on that that I've kind of learned some from my own patterns of behavior on YouTube. Uh, the the people, re, other reason besides the algorithm why people come in, sway, and then leave and then come back, it's like a wave kind of pattern, is because YouTube's not like a TV show, right? It doesn't have seasons. Yeah. It's like normally a, a, YouTube, a TV program runs for like six months, and then you get six months of a break, right? You never get burned out. But YouTube is every day all year. Mm -hmm. So people yeah. never get the break. So sometimes people just tune out for a little while, and they're like, I wonder what this guy's up to, and come back to it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've done that myself. I've watched a channel, and then I got burnt out on the channel, and then 
you know, I'll come back. It's like, oh, yeah, now I remember why I like it. And then after a month, oh, now I remember why I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm sure the same with me. I mean, I get tired of looking at myself every day, too. Um, you know, anyway, but yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Have you ever felt burnout from any of the segments you do? Um, not yet. Um, I kind of switch it up. Um, I tend to not, like, it's a weird thing. I send, tend to go heavy into a segment, and I'll do multiple videos in that segment in a week. Um, and then I won't touch it for a while. That I need to get better at. I need to make sure I get, like, collector knots. I need to make sure at least I get one or two of those out a month. But sometimes, like, I can't remember the last time I did a collector knot. But I really want to go back and do one because I get hooked on, oh, now I want to do some Switch videos and stuff. Um, I don't know if I get burned out. I just get forgetful that I kind of <laughs> leave a series and don't get back to it for a while. So, but yeah, no, I haven't felt any burnout yet. I thought it'd be And kinda... I do a lot of content. I do. A oh, lot yeah, of you content. do. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm jealous. I wish I could pump out that much content. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm I just don't have that. I'm, I'm motivated, but I'm not as motivated as you. I, I give you a lot of credit. You have way more motivation than most people I know. Yeah, I, there was a time during COVID. I was I think it was boredom being at home and not having a commute anymore that I was like three videos a day, and. I'm like, that was my dealing with COVID and dealing with the lockdown and shutdown was creating videos and get, mm -hmm. because like I all of a sudden had three extra hours in my day where I wasn't commuting back oh, and forth yeah. to work. So, um, but now it's a little different, but I don't have so much to say, I guess, anymore. I'm used to the COVID world now, I guess. So I'm not, but it was an outlet for me for the longest. And I, I only realized that lately that when I went back and looked at my channels, like, Oh yeah, probably because I didn't see anybody for four months. I didn't see my friends, right? It was just me, my wife, and my kids, and so and YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. kind of oh weird. yeah, I definitely understand. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Oh, what was your biggest learning experience on YouTube? Um, my biggest learning experience on YouTube was not every not everything you create will find any traction or audience and my biggest learning is just because you love it don't mean to say other people will love it and some of my favorite videos i've ever done and i'm so proud of got less views than stuff i've um spent half the time half the energy and half the passion on and i learned that don't worry about it who cares just make what you want to make and have fun with it um and that was a big lesson learned. And the other one is um, there are a lot of hails out there on YouTube. And the quicker you understand how to ban people in YouTube, the better you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, I didn't know how to ban somebody until four months ago. Like, I had some nasty comments. And I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you ban someone? So, <laughs> it's just, you ask, I'll answer. <laughs> it's, uh... It's kind of a weird thing because your channel's so positive. Like the only thing I can think of is if they, if they assumed you were fake or something. But I never got that vibe from you. Yeah, I get. I still get that. People still think it, and I'm. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Some people are just <laughs> genuinely happy people. Yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, you know what? Like, am I bubbly all day long? No, but I'm not. I'm not like getting on a on a channel and smiling for no reason, like and <laughs> and having fun. That that's so silly. You know how much energy that would. How how good of an actor would someone have to be to do that twice a day for a year? Yeah, in exactly. In videos, like mm -hmm. it, like seriously, I should get an Oscar for that. What's what's the YouTube <laughs> called? What's the YouTube yeah. wars called? The two B's. I think you're right. Yeah, they used to do the two B's, and they used yeah. to also bring in like their favorite creators on the rewinds and whatnot. So, but no, but Chris and Will, though, and all seriously, learning the actual functional usage of YouTube was super important for me. Like, I did not understand how to customize my channel layout. I didn't understand, like, I, there was, before, when I started last year, there wasn't a lot of good, um, YouTube kind of buried a lot of its features, and mm -hmm. they're getting much better at it now, but not figuring out how to present my channel better, how to get rid of, like, how to moderate my comments took me figure, forever to figure all that out, because I'm just not web savvy, I guess, but understanding the functional nature of your uh, of the platform you're on is is pretty important yeah 
And if anybody hasn't seen uh, Pete's channel before with the All Access podcast, this is a pretty good example of what that looks like. Yeah, that's a small show. It started like it started with just three of us, and now we had ten one time <laughs> on the channel. It's crazy. Yeah, you <laughs> really have a, a big group of cool people that get on there mm -hmm. and just have a lot of stuff to say, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I've invited other people to come on. It's just that, uh, um, I guess I'd let them know the show's open for anybody to come on. Like I'll send them an invite. It's just it's hard for people to hit the times. So I get that a lot where people ask. It's like, oh, why is this person on a show? Why is this person on a show? It's like, well, I've asked. It's just it's hard. Like, you know yourself. Like, I've been pestering you guys for a while to come on the show, right? But you guys, you know, it's not that I'm going to stop asking, but I respect the fact that everybody has different schedules, right? So mm -hmm. this video here is one that I had, uh, I'm telling you about. Like, I had zero, like, I was passionate about the products. But that's not the same as uh, other videos I've done. And this one hit. People love this video. That's because that Hori, the Hori controller is very popular. And your other yeah. thing is very popular. And you're like one of the only channels I've ever found that compared the two. Because who yeah. would think that those two things would be comparable when one's literally just a grip and the other one is straight up controllers? Yeah, I'm doing a part two of that eventually um, because I do have an ultimate verdict now based on okay. my usage of a couple thousand hours in both. But yeah, that video just took off for some reason. And I didn't realize it took off because I did a, a bunch of videos after. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, a month later, I'm looking, it's like, what? I got a video that had a thousand views? No way. <laughs> well, you <laughs> presented it really video? well. You know how I found this video? This is funny. I was looking for a comparison video and I forgot that I had done one. <laughs> and when I searched it, it came up. And I'm like, wow, this one's got a thousand views. And I'm like, oh, you dingbat, that's your video. <laughs> How the that's heck awesome. did I ever get a thousand subs? That's what that people is are funny. Right <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you're, just, this... you're just a super happy and fun person to watch, Pete, I gotta say. <laughs> but think about it. Like, I was searching for, I forgot I had done the video, and then I realized, wow, I got a thousand views. That's awesome. I'm not sure about the guy presenting the stuff, but you know, the information's good. <laughs> uh, this, I got a, yeah, um, yeah. So I've got an update video coming for this one. Are you gonna, uh, gonna um, probably get six views and we'll be done? <laughs> well, that's what you need to do. Is at the end of this video, make sure you have an outro uh, link to it. Yeah, link in, which I'm horrible at. If you've watched any of my videos, I'm horrible at all. I'm horrible at self promoting any of my stuff. Well, at the end of a, so if you make one screen one time, you can literally copy it to all your videos. Well, if it wasn't for you guys, I still wouldn't have better thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I that criticism to hurt. <laughs> you, you did change your thumbnails. I like your thumbnails a lot now with the banner mm -hmm. and the, the branding. It's really good. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I had it reversed and you said, well, Pete, if you move it over here, then people can see, what was it? You were telling me the timestamp. The, the timestamp covered yeah, yeah. covered your logo covered or, or, my logo yeah and th but that yeah, no. that was actually the mistake we made when we switched ours um <laughs> i had the, <laughs> been on the wrong side and we did our videos with some of the biggest channels we've ever done them with and all of the videos have the logo on the wrong side so nobody sees the logo <laughs> you need to go and update that thumbnail i might because i might start pulling the intro off some of our more popular videos i might yeah. dump the um intro i redid this one this one's got a new thumbnail on it hmm. I, I wouldn't read it. I put my branding on this one. Then I got lazy and didn't do the rest. Because I noticed there's a, immediately um, on most of our videos, if we don't start or if we start with the music, there's an immediate drop off of like 70% of the viewers. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> How do we have 5,500 watch hours? Yeah. It's beyond me. <laughs> oh, oh. Congrats, by the way. That's if awesome. we could get the subscribers. but <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll get them. You'll get them, man. You'll get them. It'll come. It'll come. How long you been doing it now? Ten years. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had, I've had maybe, like maybe you guys should go into radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had like uh, at least between ten and twenty channels throughout the time I've been on YouTube, but this has oh, been the one that I've crazy. stuck with the most. Chris oh, yeah. is dragging me down. <laughs> you guys might need a big split. <laughs> yep, I need to go solo. <laughs> will, will cast and Chris cast. We'll see which yeah, one wins. Yeah. We'll compete. Chris just has to edit all my stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the video he doesn't notice there's a subscribe to chris's podcast exactly yeah exactly <laughs> let's see here um awesome. 
Well, you're you're actually on the next question here. Yeah. So, what are some of your favorite creators here on the YouTube? Is oh boy, I thought about this when I when I saw the questions because I that's the only thing I prepared for was this question <laughs> because I watched so many different creators. Uh, like you want my honest opinion because that's all you're gonna get anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's not game channels. Uh, my favorite ones are a channel I watch. One of them I watch my son and my daughter. It's called Simply Dumpling. It's um, about Mickey Chan. He goes around the world and he eats uh, food. I'm a big guy. I'm a big dude. I love it's food. Simply or strictly? Strictly Dumpling, yeah. Okay, I thought you said Simply. Maybe no, you didn't. Strictly I don't Dumpling. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so I love this show. That's one of, uh, one of my favorite shows to watch. Uh, I just really, really enjoy... Um, food and I love food from all over the world different things my son loves it we, we sit down and we watch and he goes to like all these different restaurants and tries crazy foods and stuff anyway um, and uh, because my, my kids are um, like my wife is Singaporean Chinese so my kids are, are half uh, Singaporean half uh, Canadian so it, it's just like you know I just introducing my kid to the world right through this video and he's a great guy I, I, I haven't met him yet but he comes to Vancouver quite a bit so hopefully one day I can get meet him he's a big dude big like a big big YouTube guy um, another channel I watch is called sick Cooper SIC Cooper SIC oh, Cooper. oh okay different kind of sick <laughs> okay this guy yeah and so he runs a uh, video game store so it's, it's like I said, it's not about video games per se, but he runs a retro game store in Washington. And uh, why I like this is um, I've got this. I love watching how to videos. I I've always wanted to open up a retro video game store. Um, I always wanted my own one. So I watch I've been watching his channel for a while now. I just enjoy that. He talks about his story, talks about the passion he has for his work and stuff like that. So. I, re I really, really like this channel. I just go there um, and relax and see game pickups. People trade stuff in, and I get jealous because I'm thinking if I owned a video game store, I wouldn't have to pay <laughs> $1,000 for this game. Someone would just trade it in, and I can give them store credit. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking yeah. my mind. Mm -hmm. So I like that show. Um, and, um, oh, my gosh. I've got a lot of other channels I watch, too. Oh. Uh, See, I don't want to leave, leave any of my friends out because I've got a lot of friends that that I've made that I watch. And uh, I don't know, man. I watch a lot of shows that are related to games I play. Um, I watch uh, shows because I play a game, um, Lord of the Rings Online. It's an old, old yeah. game. I play that. Um, and I got a sh it's not a shout out, but one of my favorite channels and the first channel ever subscribe to on youtube um unfortunately the person who ran the channel is no longer with us but was oh. i don't know if you've heard of uh, total biscuit mm -hmm. oh yeah yep um i absolutely adored his channel and but he passed away a long while ago so um but that was the first channel i've ever subscribed to and ever watched on youtube um other than that i watch a smattering i watch you guys' channel I watch a, a bunch of other people's channels. Um, I like informational and uh, podcast channels. Um, and I like your channel because you guys talk to other YouTubers, which is really cool. So I've like, mm -hmm. um, oh, RGT. I'm a big fan of RGT's channel. Um, and I know he's been on your show, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, he was. Yeah. So I've been watching him for a long while. He <laughs> He's a pretty crazy dude. I used to get a kick at him when he used to smoke and smash consoles up. <laughs> I used to get a kick out of that. So I watch his channel. It's uh, it's uh, it's because I I think the way he presents his stuff and like I don't know him. I just like the way he's um he just seems genuine. It's just he seems like he's a gamer. He seems like he cares, but he doesn't care. Um, he's obviously grown quite quite large. And I guess finally um. I, I like watching, um, I guess, probably my last channel. I don't watch a whole lot, actually, consistently anymore. I used to watch a channel. Um, I forget the name of it, guys. We'll come back to it. I forget it. I forget the name. You mind, I if, I, uh, I should... you mind if I throw up the channel that actually led me into your, your channel? Oh, boy, yeah. Oh, I know who this guy is. Yeah, this guy. It was yeah, his he commentary. Doesn't like he doesn't like you? I don't think so, right? Game test play? 
No, he, he gave you he gave you critiques. I just didn't know how you took them. Oh no, I did. I I think I commented. I thought they were quite quite funny and quite <laughs> quite true. Yeah, he was kind of uh, yeah. This this. Um, I'm trying to remember where. I forget. This is, this is it right here. Yeah, this is the guy right here. This guy. So I've had a few conversations oh, yeah. with him in the Dude, background. He looks like somebody I work with, and that's what freaks me out when I. <laughs> Yeah, he's quite good. He's actually good. I had no problem at all with him. This is yeah, I remember this video. Yeah, this I got sent to me by someone. They said this guy, this guy's all over you, Pete. And I'm like, that eh, wasn't so bad. He was, he was definitely well, you guys all over. Critique- I don't, I could give, to be honest with you, dude. If it's good criticism, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, um, he's got like a very polished approach in how he speaks. Like I wish I could speak like that. I, I really appreciate what he does. Um. But I got the feeling he, he was, like, nice but didn't like me. But I don't know. Maybe it's just my, my take on it. <laughs> I think he just got a really droll sense of humor. Because I messaged yeah. him and I said, hey, rate our podcast. And he went and clicked on one of our videos. I don't know which one he clicked on. But he went, yeah, you guys don't do anything like these guys I reviewed in this video. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna say their names because a lot of people, well, you'll know who these guys are. Yeah. But I'll just put it that way. Um, but he's like, you guys don't say any, any ums or pauses like these guys do i have nothing for you guys i was like what you have nothing for us he didn't watch the video clearly i guess not <laughs> but anyways yeah that was how i found your channel was through him and oh, uh sweet. so yeah I, I started watching your stuff right after that actually nice and i'm not even subscribed to him it came up in the algorithm but i am subscribed now but i wasn't oh, at the nice. time that was so funny mm-hmm. about it it's funny how many channels we watch and we don't subscribe to i get we're all content <laughs> yeah. creators and our 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 our, our shilling for subs constantly <laughs> hey like, we, I, I we don't do that I anymore i have nightmares of uh please hit that subscribe button it's free i wake up in the middle of the night please hit that subscribe button is free <laughs> and at the end of the day i'm like i don't care <laughs> we, we did that for like a couple weeks and we just stopped doing it for some reason i think we should probably bring back that please subscribe to the channel you should you should it does actually uh. it, it, it does because people forget to do it look we all forget to do it yeah uh, right? i always feel bad about it it's like I don't know. Is it really worth subscribing to? I don't know. Yeah, do I really want them to show up? Do I have to ring that bell? Do I really have to ring that bell? It's like, I never say ring the bell. I don't even know what the bell does. <laughs> like, oh, it doesn't work right now. Because I have the I don't have the bell for anybody, and I'm getting notifications like I have the yes. bell. So I'm yep. not sure what's going on. Or I don't get notifications at all for people. Like, yeah. I have to search people all the time. Or I get, like, the, I get, like, the notifications for channels I'm not even subscribed to. Yes. Like... I think I got one for uh, like Bloomberg one time. I'm like, I'm not subscribed to Bloomberg. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Anyways, no, it, no, it doesn't. But yeah, those are some of the YouTube channels. Like, I wish I could. I wish I had cooler channels to watch. I know a lot of people come on your show and have some really cool channels. Uh, my channel, the ones I like, are just kind of, I don't know, just stuff I enjoy watching. Like, like yeah, I, I'll even watch the Pizza One Bite guy. What's his name? Dave Portney. I don't know what that is. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, pizza, one bite. Everybody knows the rule, dude. Apparently, he's like not the greatest human being in the world, but I love pizza. I absolutely yeah. love pizza. Yeah. Does he try to I, eat the I, pizza in one bite? No, he just takes a bite and rates it. Oh. He's kind of an arrogant <laughs> like... dude, but I just love the pizza. Like, I really love his pizza. The, well, mm. the pizza that he shows on his show, on his channel. Mm. Of course, he got a cheesecake one there now. Ooh, I got to go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love food. <laughs> so if you put a food YouTube... I should have done a food YouTube channel. What, what were you <laughs> thinking? Yeah. yeah, what was I thinking? Video games. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I watched this one. I, I watched it, but you can't watch it with your kids, okay? Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. No, no. You don't want to watch that one with your kids. But well, you got that uh, next question? Mm-hmm. No, I think it's your question, isn't it? No, it's not mine. Oh, I guess it is, yeah. What are your goals with YouTube? I guess it kind of goes on, hand Chris. in hand. 10 and 11 go hand in hand. YouTube. Yeah. What are you guys' goals with YouTube? I want a community tab. That's my only goal right now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have a community? When, what? You got to hit 1,000 subscribers to get a community tab. What are you going to do with your community tab? Because I have one. Can I get some right. tips from you guys? Right. Like, what are you? Polls about what t- content to make. Yeah, I want to do polls because I'm, I'm sick and tired of coming up with the topics on my own. I want to be lazy and let them come up with the topics for me. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Are you guys subscribed to my channel? Because I don't think I use the community tab very much. It's really Maybe powerful if you use it right. Okay. Uh, yeah, poll, polls, anything with interaction for the community works I well. I think I might have done a poll there. I'm not sure, though. The thing is, if, if you get good interaction on your polls, like Skyrion does, 
Yeah, um, Skyrim does a good job. Then, yeah, so you've got uh, you got a few. You got three or four. And you can actually dual post oh, to Twitter, shoot, I, I should think. do something with that poll. This one? Oh, man, what's yeah. this? I'm picking other. <laughs> oh, great. Great. You're that guy. <laughs> but no, okay. you can you can no, dual post good. you can dual post Twitter and, and YouTube community tabs. So like if you want to do a poll on both, you can and then like aggregate the score. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Mm. Now I know. But uh the um, thing you can do is you can tag creators when you do it. It's like if you do a poll or if you do a um a video, a collab with like say say you do it with Mike and you wanna tag him when you post the video, then people can find it through the community tab, find his channel. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm not using that. See, I told you, I'm such a noob with that. Like, I'm not even using that properly. It's just like Twitter. You just at their channel name. I think it works oh, just that that it's simply. I know. only realized recently on YouTube, if you, you can at people who has over a thousand subs and they'll show up in your comments. You don't have to link to channels. Yeah, oh. yeah, you the can. The description of your video. So, like, anybody on the Amico All Access got a thousand subs. I just got to at them. I don't have to put their name and copy their URL in to get links to them, but... My goals on YouTube, um, I don't know. I was always get a thousand subs because I wanted to monetize so I can give the money to charity. That's ultimately the goal. I've achieved that. Um, my goal now is just continue growing, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously, um, I the more subs, the more likes, the more views, the more money I can raise for Extra Life and help that cause. Um, ultimately, I like to take over the entire world. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's ultimate. My ultimate goal is like you know, enslave mankind. Uh, but uh, no, it's. Uh, I I think I've reached my goal now. Is just keep growing, but do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Like I want to do it. I don't want to change how I do things, who I talk to. Um, I don't want to become someone who has to do content to survive. Like that's not the goal. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want a career off of goal. YouTube. I want to use it to for fun. And to relax. Like this is relaxing to me. Chat with you guys. This is fun. I'm having a good time. Good. It, it did help me actually branch out during the uh, pandemic there for a while. Yeah, it so helped <laughs> me, man. Talking to people and doing videos and having a goal every day. Like you know, literally not going outside of my house for four months, man. That was like, <laughs> that was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like my wife did it all because I have I have asthma, so like. I don't really want to get any respiratory diseases, right? So mm -hmm. um, my wife did all that, so I took care of the home front. But it's only so much kind of walking around your house you can do. But having YouTube and having a goal, it was, it was pretty fun. But, yeah. yeah. So, well, you can ask the next question, but he kind of already alluded to it. Yeah, Yeah, I'll tell you the story behind it, though. It's it's I talked about it in one of my vlogs. I got, a, like, uh, the vlogs I don't do very often, but sometimes I feel I just want to talk about something, but... But for you the viewers that don't have the question yet, we'll yeah, should probably I'm, ask, I'll it. ask it. All right. What inspired you to send <laughs> I was going to get there, Chris. <laughs> Extra Life donations for your channel. Oh, okay. So um, this is this is really personal um, and not personal like I don't want to share it. It's just personal why. Um, it's because my I have an eight-year-old boy and I have a four-year-old girl. And my son was born uh, a, almost three months premature. So when he came out, he was like, it could fit in my hand and if you look at my extra life channel uh there's old old pages you can see some pictures um but he was like he was in NICU which is a part of the hospital for kids that you know very sick children and we we've got fabulous medicine up here in Canada as you guys do in the U.S. and these people were amazing but I saw the struggles they had to go through every day and a lot of the families there who probably didn't have the same two jobs like my, my wife and I had or probably didn't have the same stability and they were struggling and like you know my kid went through a lot and now of course he's very healthy and a big boy and everything like that but it was kind of scary and to live at the hospital for three months and to see everything people went through and all the families and the kids and you know having you know the fact that like organizations were like donating a lot of supplies to these families like pampers and diapers and cleaning supplies and things you take for granted really showed that there there's if I could give more back to these these charities I could so I I kind of started thinking how can I do it I love video games and I said well there's I found out about extra life the it was a charity marathon so I started that about uh, eight years ago 
And I've been doing it ever since. And every year I do a marathon and I play games 24 hours. And it's my little way to give back to the people that saved my, ch- my child's life. Because they did. My, like, if they weren't around, my kid would have come out at three pounds and probably wouldn't have survived because of the, the miracles of modern medicine and the people that practice it. So um, I, I'll never stop doing that. And normally every year I try a goal of raise $1,000 and I match 1000 myself, Canadian. And so I thought, I'm still going to do that. But how about I do that through YouTube so I can uh, raise even more? And so other parents and other children can benefit from it. So, And what I love about Extra Life is you can choose your hospital, but they spread the money out through all the different parts of uh, the regions through North America and stuff like that. So hmm. that's why I do it. Yeah. And as stated in the beginning of the video, we'll have a link to that in the description below. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. it's uh, So everything on my channel, um, all the ad revenue I get, which is like I've told the guys before the show, it's it's not very much, right? YouTube doesn't give their money away uh, but through likes and the the oeb club the memberships on the channel all that 100 percent goes to uh and i post it every uh every time i get a payment in i post it to actually and uh little known fact about our third co-host billy who is one of the original guests on this channel he actually supports extra life as well he did a 24-hour oh, stream fantastic. early on in the time that we collab with him um, unfortunately, he didn't have a lot of followers at the time, so he didn't he didn't hit his goal, but he didn't mm-hmm. it didn't stop him from trying. Oh gosh, no! Some years I didn't hit mine, uh, and then the years you do is great, but you get like I find that going through YouTube and and I used to do it on Twitch, you, you never know who's gonna watch your stream and donate randomly. Like I had people anonymously donate a hundred bucks to my stream one year. And I almost cried on stream. I was like super emotional about it. And I still get emotional when people donate to my channel. Like I get very uncomfortable when somebody does a super sticker on my chat because I'm like, well, somebody's actually parting ways with their earned her money, right? That's pretty, it's pretty cool. So, mm-hmm. and they trust and trust me enough to know that it's getting donated on their behalf, which is really cool. Yeah, and you, I, yeah. if I remember correctly, you screenshot your donations and throw them up so yeah. people can, can you yeah. know. Kind of like yeah, audit, email, auditing yourself like, a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like for me, it's uh, you know, if people want to, you know, like if I, I think YouTube don't mind people seeing your your revenue numbers and that, but I, like you, know, if people start questioning it about it, maybe I just won't. I'll just do my own personal donations. Like if it gets too much of a hassle, right? But right now, I just take the screenshot, put it up, and and uh, and do a donation. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically the where this all came from yeah and i really respected that about your channel when i yeah, found that out um i was like man this guy's just awesome <laughs> so. yeah well i think it's the people that that are using the money that are awesome i'm just like i like i'm just trying to find more ways to get the awareness out there i mean i know extra life like this one here says bc children's hospital right but they they service all of um our region but also you when you do your donations and when i set up my channel uh, a certain part goes to the Miracle Children's Network, which is North America. Mm-hmm. Like, that's who's the master, I guess, um, purveyor of everything is the uh, Miracle Network. So, I just meant, like, it was awesome to hear about somebody on YouTube who's not in it for money. Oh, st- gosh, no. And is still producing <laughs> producing the content that you produce at the rate that you produce it. Yeah. It's just, it's such a... Um, I don't know how to describe it, but I, I'm very touched by the fact that you're doing this. Oh, thanks, man. I, you know, I think the reason I put so much content out there is I'm hoping one day someone big sees something that I'm doing mm-hmm. throw, and says a shout out on their channel, and then I get flooded, and all that goes to Extra Life, like all the, the rewards of that. Like, you know, that's one thing I hope one day someone out there who is making a living, and, and God bless them for doing it, like they just, you know, because a mention of your channel from some of the big channels goes a long way. Oh, yeah. And that would be cool to to happen one day. Um, will it ever happen? Probably not. But uh, the more content you make, maybe someone will like it one of these days. Like, you know, a Metal Jesus or someone like that might one day say, oh, my gosh, this guy does make decent content. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, my well, Tim Hortons a... cup on that video. That's awesome. <laughs> My coffee cup. Now I want a Tim Hortons. <laughs> I love Tim Hortons. Oh my gosh! Oh, the coffee's so good, and Detroit has them. Yep. Oh. Is that in Canada though? And the thing no. is, is 
the food is different in Canada too. So you have a, like a spicy chicken sandwich there, and it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> is that a white? Though, right? Is that a white a Xbox smaller. in the bottom there? Yeah, that's my crystal. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. That's cool. I thought yeah, you were... I've got, I've got. That's over there now. Uh, now I've got my. Oh my gosh. This is my player right here. This is the one I capture on Will all the time. I don't know if you can see that. The green one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking for a blue one now. I'm on the. I almost got my blue one secured. They made a blue one, a blue see-through one in Canada. So I'm trying to find that one right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting. I, I always, I always find variants of consoles really cool. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll track down the Star Wars Xbox 360 one. Yes. So. When you, uh, you guys it, got my hoary one up there again. You guys like that video? It keeps coming up. I must have watched <laughs> at least twice. <laughs> I'm gonna get me to three thousand views on that that one before the end of the show. <laughs> this one's at one seventy nine. Okay, I'm helping out the other ones. It's silly. If I could change one thing, it's like why did I have a printer behind me for the better <laughs> part of eight months? Hey, you can get a green screen really cheap. I did mine for like ten bucks. I have bucks. one. My green screen's right over here. Oh, is it? Okay. But I can't fit it behind me because I'm wedged in here. <laughs> And it's too big to fit in. But oh. that printer, nobody ever said, Pete, why do you have a printer behind you? No one gonna, ever said that. You're going to print like, off a receipt and pull it up on the... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, is That's it... the it... funniest thing. <laughs> that printer's gone. It's on the floor over there now. We've replaced it. Is there anything that we have missed that you wanted to cover or anything that you would like to ask us, even though you've already done that a little bit throughout the podcast? Oh, yeah. But... No, I'm, a, I'm a natural born interviewer. Uh, no, man. I, I think you guys did great. I'm. Uh, uh, I've talked a lot. I, I. I'm. I feel feel privileged. You guys are wanting to chat with me. That's pretty cool. What's going on, man? Yeah, I've, I've I wanted to have you on here since I first discovered your channel. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. We scheduled this like months ago. It seems. Yeah. So. That's crazy. No, that's awesome, dude. You guys are doing a great job. You gotta get you gotta get you up over a thousand subs. That's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want that community tab. I'm very jealous yeah. of the community tabs. <laughs> You're very jealous. I, I want to get you there so you can teach me how to use the community tab. <laughs> I'm gonna add OEB Pete all the time. Mm -hmm. what, what was this yeah. video, Pete? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter me. Anyways, um, well, thank you for doing the interview, and we've got yes, at least, uh, hopefully we'll do the other four segments shortly after this video, but you guys will see them in a different order than what we're doing them in a recording, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And you have an awesome day, I'm Pete. And we will see you. On the next GoCast. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>